Hello and welcome to Talk About Jazz with Doug Hall. I'm your host, Doug Hall. And today our musical artist is Angela Varro. And she's a recent master's scholar and current undergrad student. She has a BM in contemporary writing and production and performance from Berkeley College of Music. And she graduated in 2023 with a MM in the Global Jazz Institute program. So hello and welcome, Anila. Uh, we're excited to have you here today to have a little chat about your musical background, your education, and also any future projects. We'll be queuing up two songs uh, that Anila has composed recently. I'd like to just review basically a resume because I think it's very important for an audience to understand the background uh, of individual musicians as artists. Uh, Angela is an Andalusian violinist, and as she will, I will prompt a question for her to speak more about that as a location that relates to her roots in Spain, and I'll give her an opportunity to talk more about that later. Violinist, educator, uh, multi-instrumentalist, improviser, arranger, producer, and composer from Baina Cordo Cordoba in Spain. Uh, growing up in a musical family uh, between opera and flamingo, uh, music and the fusion of cultures. And in her own words, quote, this fusion of cultures, unquote, has always been her main way of expression. She specializes in the fusion of jazz and flamingo violin, among other styles. She collaborates with flamingo versions of women's compositions with the flamingo guitarist Antonio Contines. And Ms. Varro is part of a Grammy-nominated group with uh, Berkeley's Danilo Perez and his Global Jazz Messengers. So welcome once again, uh, Angela. And what I'd like to do is transition to your two song selections. And if you'd like to, we'd love to hear you set it up a little bit or tell us a little bit about the background for these songs. And the first song will be, I'll have you pronounce the first song for me if you could. <laughs> yeah, of Which, course, uh, Buleria de Goyo. Thank you. Could you tell us a little bit about the origins and how this composition came about? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this this composition called Bulerías de Goyo or Goyo's Bulerías um, uses and explores the flamenco palo of Buleria in a more contemporary or almost like modern jazz, um, harmonical and, and war. Um, I really like the term that one of my mentors, uh, Maestro Danilo Perez, uses, um, which is it's not a term, it's a whole concept, it's a whole movement called Global Jazz. And at the end of the day, I think that as a global jazz musician, what I do is explore the world through through those lens. Um, and uh, Bulerias de Goyo is, is a, a, a song, uh, a tune that I compose thinking about um, the the concept of death inside of my my culture, my Andalusian, um, mm -hmm. and all the influences I have, where okay. we tend um, to really, really grieve people continuously okay. um, for years and years and years. And the essence of that people, family members, in this case, my uncle, which is I try to honor with this song, um, disappears on this this precise grief and my um, idea of exploration with this is Buleria is a palo that is always used for celebrations. Palo, um, uh, when I'm talking about palos, it's like a flamenco, it's a flamenco style, which is a compilation of a uh, rhythmical pattern, a uh, specific harmonic uh, progression, um, as well as a specific mood, a specific geographical place that it appears in Andalusia, as well as many, many other layers that I could get into. Wow. Um, but okay. um, Buleria is always for partying, it's always for celebration. And uh, my uncle in particular was such a funny 
an incredible man. And uh, sadly, we lost him uh, many years ago. And sometimes in family uh, conversations, what remains is the grieving, but not the essence of the person. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. this composition is a way to remember um, the people by their actions, by their personality, not by the way they they left us. Wow. I think that's a wonderful tradition. And I think our listeners and our audience wouldn't be aware of that as being a part of the Spanish culture. Um, But uh, I think that's a wonderful way to recognize and not forget uh, relatives and family members. Um, Obviously, it's a way to kind of celebrate them and and to bring their memory back uh, to your family. Uh, I think that's very interesting. Thank you for sharing that with us. So we're going to listen to a portion of uh, the song that uh, Anheli just described. It's a a very, um, that particular segment with the soaring voice, which is very beautiful as an instrument itself, and then your transition to your solo and melody on the violin, it's a very, very passionate and intimate piece. Um, And the more that you explained it being a reflection on remembrance of somebody in particular in your family, I can feel that more in in the music. Um, it's very um, it's very instrumental yet uh, very uh, passionate emotionally. Um, I know that earlier in the song we have a lot of the very exhilarating punctuation of a flamingo uh, rhythm, but I wanted to ensure that I caught uh, what I hope was your primary violin solo. So that's Thank you. You're welcome. This means a lot. Um, So, um, and again, I I shouldn't make (laughs) comparisons with professional jazz violinists, but it just came to me. One of my, 
One of my favorite jazz musicians uh, plays violin, and I guess I could play Trivial Pursuit now, but uh, that is uh, Jean-Luc Ponté. Jean-Luc Ponté, who played... Yes, he's one of my... He's one of my... Jean-Luc Ponté, yeah. Yeah. I love um, him. He's one of my main inspirations. And oh, well, I, oh, well, I took a lucky guess. Um, really inspired me to be him. Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> he helped... I, th I think he helped me feel a different side of jazz um, because he has a way of, of mm. playing on, on his violin like you that involves, well, a lot of melody and a lot of emotion and um, aside from technical ability. So thank you for sharing the introduction to this song. It also makes it, I think, more meaningful for people to listen to in the context of knowing that it's a, remem a remembrance in, in, in some specific way. Um, which is wonderful. Do you want to set up uh, the next song, which I'll attempt the pronunciation of Tangos de la Alameda? Yes, Tangos de la Medina. Absolutely. Um, so my town of Baena um, is such a beautiful, uh, for me, means the word, right? Um, coming from such a humble and rural area. Uh, a small town in the south of Andalusia, really, really close to, like, closer to the to what we'll talk about the the north of Africa and similar. We have a really con important connection with with many cultures, with many cultures. Okay. But um, my town has a really important uh, historically Arabic influence, um, and. Mm, it's what is called or known as a, um, as a lime town. They're, all the houses are white and made of, of lime. And oh, uh, the Almedina is the highest part historically uh, of the town. And my town is surrender. It's really different to, to, <laughs> to American or like at least Massachusetts geography. Um, but in Andalusia, we have towns and then field, field, kind of similar to Texas and southern parts of USA, oh, okay. where you have small towns and then fields of agriculture and similar. And our main product is olive oil. So we are surrounded, we make the best olive oil in the world, but mm -hmm. the whole town is surrounded, uh, surrounded by many, 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 many olive trees. So from the Almedina, Almedina um, in uh, Arab Andalusian back, like, 400 years ago 500 okay. years ago was um was almedina means uh, a protection kind of like okay. a, like a protection wall okay so the it's used to be at the highest point of the town which is the town is on a mountain and is this a a way to honor my my roots and my town and mm -hmm. just like that feeling of of summer and being up there and just seeing all of this sea of olive trees because you only see mm. olive trees around you yes um and just feeling the wind and all of that so this was kind of like a a representation of that specific fee feeling. Uh, in this case, this is in the palo, of course, of uh, tangos, and not to be misunderstood with Argentinian tango. Inside of flamenco, um, we have flamenco tango, which um, is also a celebration <laughs> okay. kind of uh, palo as well. But yeah, and it's one of my favorite palos, so I just kind of wanted to to explore that um, through through those lands that I was talking about before and kind of right. like having that exploration of, of a more traditional kind of approach into into flamenco, I will say for sure, with this specific composition. Okay. Um, yeah, kind of like exploring a little bit of 75% <laughs> traditional with that uh, 25 rest of, of my own personal exploration or or cuckooness <laughs> okay that's okay we, that that's always yeah. creative creative juices all right well let's give a listen Thank you. 
love I love the 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 rhythm and syncopation driving that, uh, as well as of course the violin and the guitar. Uh, it's it's funny. I oh, I I kind of visualize a flamingo dancer on a floor um, performing. Um, uh, and I know that is more cliche or traditional, but that but there is that there is that driving form of of dance and and body movement that seems to come with with this this style of of music. And um, I love the uh, I love the introductory sound of the Spanish acoustic guitar, and then how that then transitions to your violin, which begins more slowly and then builds. Um, so a wonderful mixture of flavors. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're yeah. welcome. And um, kind of, I guess, going back to your roots, I wanted to ask you a question related to how your Andalusian ethnic roots in southern Spain, it's a big question, of course, uh, has informed your musical expression and development. I know that you've talked about that at your uh, your website. And could you could you speak a little bit to how your roots in that location has influenced your your song and your expression of music? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Andalusian culture um, it's formed by the mixture of different as i said before we're really influenced by many many cultures but uh, mm -hmm. we can trace mm -hmm. our or ethnical reason right or like the reason of why flamenco appears like uh so many years ago um uh, to the convivence and like the community and the consequence mm -hmm. of uh, five communities in particular uh being um uh, living together in the region of Andalusia, uh, in particular, right. uh, not as much uh, in other parts of Spain, of Spain, due to the geographical uh, position of Andalusia, of course, um, and the historical. Uh, like we were a, a full kingdom a caliphate back in the day, um, so that kind of like separates us from the rest of the Iberian Peninsula culturally for sure ethnically of course um so these cultures five cultures are of course the sephardi jewish culture mm -hmm. the romani culture um uh generally called gypsy culture romani culture um the north african culture the black uh, mm. like west african black culture and the um and the muslim culture so right. during many, many, many years, way longer yeah. than Spain has ever been as a country um, Catholic, uh, we've been ruled by this uh, Muslim kingdom uh, that, crazy to think about, uh, absolutely allowed the convivence and the livinghood of those five, pe fi five ethnias uh, mm -hmm. together. And that right. convivence and mix uh, is what creates flamenco. Because flamenco has all of these influences in, on it, right? Uh, okay. Depending of the palo, for example, uh, tangos, we know because of the way in the particular, like the song we just listened to, be, mm -hmm. we know because of the way the the words are um, developed, right? Tangos, mm -hmm. we know, is of a, or, a African origin because of the os, oh. a okay. n g o s. Pandangos, Tarantos eh, as well, those are African uh, origin. Solea, for example, um, or Maratin, we know those are um, Muslim origins. That Interesting. They have, right? Interesting. Or Saeta as well. So um, this whole perception of music, it really translates to everything uh, that we do in life. Is the right. way we cook, is the way we talk, is the way we create art. It's really based on community, right? It's really based on you don't learn um in order to for me, like the way I learned flamenco and flamenco standards was on my kitchen while my mom and my grandma will be mm -hmm. cooking and they will be clapping and my whole family right. and then someone, right. someone will wow. come and we dance. Mm -hmm. Um it made me really happy your comment of you self imagining a dancer right there, because for us it's all the same, it's all connected. 
It's, uh, uh, it's the spices you put on the food, the way right. you dance and the way you play. It's all part of the same thing. And right. as, a, as a community that for many centuries we've been um, culturally abused um, mm -hmm. by right. other parts of the country or right. whole... Um, uh, I don't want to get super deep on this, but our whole culture is continuously sell as Spanish culture when it's in case on this case it's Andalusian culture, um, and then all their beautiful music from Spain, which is a, a country of so many contrasts, uh, it gets right. totally forbidden and forgotten, right? Yeah. Uh, due to the and um, for me, this whole inspiration comes literally from my town, comes from my family. Mm -hmm. it comes from the right. way we see music and the way we we kind of like, not music, but life itself. Because right. for us, it's the same thing. Right. Well, it's remarkable. I don't know if this um, answers your question. <laughs> no, I think um, that's what makes these interviews for me more interesting is because you bring with you this entire explanation of your Spanish culture in that region and how all these other influences, Muslim, African, and otherwise, geographically, if you look at where Southern Spain is um, and know a little bit about the history, all those influences come into play. And that's very, I mean, that adds to the flavor and the depth of the, of the music. Um, as you obviously are a part of all that, sharing those those flavors. Well, uh, I wanted to ask you just more specifically uh, about your choice of instrument, the violin, and it can kind of relate to however you want to answer the question, um, but you've already talked mm -hmm. about your roots. So how would you say the unique sound and nature of the violin allows you to express yourself? I think violin for me, um, it was like the first time I saw a violin, it kind of like almost had a shine into it. And then oh, it became okay. like, uh, it became a part of myself, not even like something that I love. It became like another, like another arm almost. Um, and I think violin is such a human instrument. It's so... Mm -hmm. Okay almost esoteric on the way you can imitate and can feel at least for me obviously like um not only the human voice but human experiences and mm -hmm. and similar i think the powerful of of this piece of wood is so <laughs> incredible and mm -hmm. um my my perception of the instrument is just like the same it's really connected of what i said right like um the way I play is the way I talk is the way I am it's yes. this instrument is not an external part of myself it's just okay. my, myself which okay. is something that is convenient because if you take out the violin I'm still a musician right yes it's not it's not something that I am a musician with the violin but it's also that that a uh, continuous trying of honoring sound and honoring my traditions uh, with something that in flamenco is not, it has done many, many times flamenco, uh, violin with flamenco, but it's not the thing that is super, super traditional or has been seen a lot. So mm -hmm. for me, this is like an long exploration, uh, continuous exploration of, of that, of that, of that honor, of that okay. process of, of loving sound, loving music and loving my my ancestors right. and the people that will come after me. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you. That's a very full answer. And obviously uh, a musician has a very intimate relationship with their, uh, with their instrument in many ways and, and expresses that in different ways. So uh, it's wonderful to hear yours. Um, as 30 minutes runs out of time very quickly, we're closing down um, on our interview uh, with you together. And I'm sure there's a lot more that, that we could share together, but I wanted to give you a chance to talk about any upcoming performances or projects that you're related, that yeah. you're involved in locally or regionally. Um, I am playing uh, many, many concerts uh, around like the next months. Um, okay. I recommend to the to the listeners to check out uh, both my website and my social medias, uh, Angela Varo Music or Angela Varo okay. Music. Um, 
everywhere I am that. Uh, I do have a really exciting um, exciting project coming up, which is my first album, which these two songs that we listen to um, are part of this album. Uh, it's called Danza del Aire, which means dances of the air. And it's basically a reflection through the lens of global jazz of um, the history of my family and Andalusian heritage. Uh, since I'm a daughter and granddaughter of immigrants and an immigrant myself, I found on that um, creativity to explore who am I, but also on a community that I'm lucky to be part of, which is full of people from everywhere. Um, yes. So it was a, a really, really beautiful and fun project or like the boot album to do um, where I explored how Andalusian culture interconnects with many other cultures. That's why the album, the album has crazy instrumentation like steel pan and violin and and then suddenly we have oud and we have flute and um it was really fun because i did it with people that i really admire and i really love and um that's coming up uh thanks to the label habitable records at uh, the end of november this year okay so, yeah that's a, that's a main project i have coming wow up. well you're you're busy that's wonderful and again when we produce this uh podcast they'll be able to see your website address and other media information that you've shared with us so um i just want to close by thanking you so much for being with with us today and sharing your music and sharing your passion for your music and roots and uh the time uh the time goes by often too quickly to to cover obviously <laughs> uh the full span of 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 the music and and your career but we've touched on some of it and i i've th i thank you very much for your time today thank you thank you so much to you too dog that was and great. such a pleasure to be part of this. thank you take care and best and best of good fortune uh as it relates to your career you. and and your 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 life direction thank you likewise thank you so much